presentation. Good morning and welcome to our final program at the end of the third term of the 2012 parliamentary session. My name is Frans Kippers. Coming up in the program this morning is an interview with the Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Mr. Richard Malloy, and we talk to him about progress with his department's turnaround strategy. We then go to Johannesburg to hear what the legislature is doing to prevent money for special grants falling into the wrong hands. We also have extracts from yesterday's joint debate to bid farewell to the newly elected chairperson of the Africa Union Commission, outgoing Home Affairs Minister Dr. Nsuska Sasana Dlamini Zuma. Service delivery, or the lack thereof, has led to several protests nationwide. It has also been under the spotlight at a special national conference of the, Social of the South African Local Government Association. Political leaders, mayors and councillors from across the country gathered at Midrand to fork out a strategy to turn around municipalities which failed to deliver on their mandate. But what is the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs doing to face the challenges and to turn the trend to ever-increasing violent protests? Well, as Sandra Mbecha invited minister, the Minister, Mr. Richard Malloy, to the studio to talk to us about COCTA's strategies. She first wanted to know from the minister which areas he had identified as so-called hotspots. We consider all municipalities as, an, as areas of interest for us to engage. Uh, because you don't want to only respond and engage with municipalities that have already shown signs of challenges. But you want to be there because the name of the game is support. We need to provide support to the municipalities closely so that the issues of service delivery is, all, is spot on. We've seen houses and property of councillors get, yeah. get burnt down. Yeah. What are you doing to, to, to deal with that kind of situation? The one is to, to educate our people that in this democracy there are doors open for people to engage to raise issues of service delivery peacefully. They don't have to resort to violence to address that one. But of course, a, it, at the extreme, it's a question of, of, of law enforcement that, that actually have, to, or have to, 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 to be on board. But honestly speaking, uh, this, this violence is uncalled for. We, we, we can achieve as, as the country and, and, and the people, we can achieve a, a lot through engagement uh, amicable. Outside of councillors' property being burnt down, we've seen some municipalities yeah. where municipal property yeah. is being is being yeah. vandalised. Yeah. Who eventually pays for all of that damage? Recently, you have had situations where where, where, where courts made determinations for organisers of, of public protests that in the event where damage is okay, uh, they take responsibility. It's a question. It's a worrisome issue because you you know. Uh, there will be elements that will that will hijack a, a, peace, a peaceful opportunity of engagement, and 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 then cause a uh, damage and uh, vandalism. And, uh, so those actually are things that people who do that should be personally responsible. That's why when we get into areas where there are service delivery protests and they turn violent on issues of allowing the law to take its course. We don't compromise. We, we, we then say here we don't negotiate. We negotiate on any other thing. But on, in, on situations where people take it to the extreme and become violent, they have to be accountable for their own actions. Talking about elements that, that hijack the whole issue of service delivery protests, you've been to the Nelson Mandela Bay Metro more than twice this year. Yeah. The deputy president, along with the president yes. and the secretary general of the ANC, yes. have also visited the, that area. Yeah. What, what exactly is going on in the Nelson Mandela Metro? And is, is it purely about service delivery or is it also political? You have a municipality, a, a metro that has run for about three years without a fully appointed municipal manager. You have had several postponements uh, for the filling of, of, that, of that vacancy. You have that municipality that has a, 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 quite a large number of senior managers uh, also uh, on acting capacity and, and stuff like that. So right on that point. But you also have 
e e areas of contestations you know contestations for 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 power for control and stuff like that the impact is that the municipality delays in taking uh, decisions that that will affect in the smooth running of the municipality took i don't know how many uh, uh, meetings postponed for the council to pass a budget so th that that is the issue that uh, actually thinks is you uh, are actually problematic now you have civil society rising up mm -hmm. to then say look we believe that uh, uh, this can be a solution we believe that that can be a solution now we have been there as you are saying i'm going back there a, a week after next i'll be spending about a minimum of three days in that area finally to make sure that look we, we have given them an opportunity to engage with leaders to raise all the issues that they have to raise it is time to act in terms of government it is time to act for them to do what is supposed to be done in that area that's what we're actually going to be there in the process we'll also engage uh, with civil society so that civil society also come to the party uh, if there are anything that is uh, pointing to to their area of responsibility so we, we then say come these two weeks uh, we will want to see order in that area there are laws there are laws in this country that have to be enforced you mentioned the issue of municipal managers now it's a contentious issue in municipalities across the country yeah there's been the question of skills and whether the people are qualified or the right people at all to be appointed. Mm -hmm. The opposition is of the view that regulations on the Municipal Finance Systems Act need to be sorted out in time mm -hmm. so that it can also deal with those issues. Mm -hmm. What's the process and how is it going there? Of course, you're quite right that uh, we, we, those regulations have not yet been finalized. I'm meeting Salga as one of the uh, uh, formations, uh, you know, organized local government. I'm meeting Salga on, on, on Monday to finalize these things. So we discussed this at the last MINMEC, uh, which is the mini a meeting of the Minister of Cooperative Governance with MECs. And we then said we need to finalize this matter. A special MINMEC is going to be held soon after I will have had a meeting with, with, with Salga. I'm meeting Salga on Monday. I'm meeting the, 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 the unions on, 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 on Friday to finalize that because it is true that that together with the, uh, the implementation, you know, there is minimum requirement, co competency requirements that, that have to, to, to be satisfied when you appoint a person for a particular position. I know there are contestations. Uh, come next year, January, there is a proclamation that prescribes this, this, this minimum competency levels. There are contestations, but then this engagement is meant to clear all those things so that we then say we we'll pull all stops to make it a point that uh, the appointment of people will be informed by nothing other than merit. The latest report from Treasury talks about at least 77.6 billion that's owed to local government across the country. Mm. What are you doing to address that issue? Because it speaks to how municipalities deliver services. Those who owe municipalities have to pay. That include ordinary citizens, but also include government departments that uh, are found to be to be owing because it's a fact it's a reality that uh, in the list would do that as as, as as minister of cooperative governance and traditional affairs i wrote letters to uh, executive authorities who are in charge with government departments to make sure that they service we then say look according to our records you are owing this municipality so much uh, we give you up to this time period to, to, to respond and service that account. Pay it and in as if you have uh, some concerns, because some will then say the billing is not accurate. If you have some concerns, raise those concerns so that the concerns can be addressed. The latest Human Settlements um, report that was compiled by the Ministerial Task Team looking at sanitation has come out with, with, with um, notions that municipalities are battling to provide services, especially in the poorest areas. I have noted that, uh, that, 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 that report. I haven't yet started to say it's a recently released report. Uh, I'll study it, but from what I, I, I have come to know now is that they did a sample of 88 municipalities, 88 out of 278. Now, it, it's a sample that then says 
uh, uh, you know, municipalities, I mean, are failing in those areas. It's good because the names of those municipalities, uh, I suppose, they are there. So in our engagement with municipalities, that will also include engaging with municipalities that are mentioned in that report. We will do that as we engage those municipalities that are mentioned in the uh, uh, recently released AGES report on audit outcomes. That fingers some municipalities to be found wanting in terms of financial management. We are engaging them. So we'll include in the list, if it, will, if it is not the same municipalities, those 88 municipalities that human settlement has identified. That was the Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Mr. Richard Balloy, talking to us on Mbeche. We go for a break and when we come back, we go to Gauteng to hear what the legislature is doing to ensure that conditional grants reach the right people and the right projects. Stay with us. <laughs>